This is a Tech TDS 5054 digital phosphor oscilloscope. This one's uh, 500 megahertz bandwidth, uh, 5 giga samples per second sampling. It's actually 1.25 gigahertz sampling per channel, but um, with interleave you'll get 5 giga samples if you're just doing one channel, 2.5 for two, and 1.25 for three or more. It has a pretty slow boot time. A couple of things are going on. This is actually a has a Linux embedded system in it, plus Windows 2000 Professional Service Pack 3. So the scope has to boot up enough so that the scope application, that's a Linux application, can load. So it takes a little while and it does some self-tests, but it does seem a little bit excessive, so I'm not going to watch the whole thing. So Windows loads and then the scope application, the Windows portion of the scope application loads with this banner. And this part of it's usually pretty fast so we can watch this. Attenuators are clicking, it's doing some self tests and some probably some minor self calibrations. We have um, a regular menu system. This is measure, display, horizontal. Um, we can look at, for example, it is this one has a touch screen. Um, I can minimize it, and you can see that it in fact is a Windows machine. Click on it again. Back to our um, scope application. We can, with the hand controls, turn on the other channels and hit the auto set. And there you have it. All channels are shown to millivolt. This thing does an autofocus. I don't know if you can see that. It's nice when they're nice and consistent. I prefer that it drop down to one millivolt for this, but maybe it only do that in 50 ohm. I'm not sure. Um, this one has what they're calling on this scope fast acquisition. Up here, you press that. It turns on the digital phosphor. And what this is is your whole record is being stored in a database of all those samples you can't see and they're being summarized so any little glitches, anything unusual you can't see to this because there's nothing on the inputs but it, any abnormalities in millions and millions of square waves etc they would um, show up and be obvious and tech spent a lot of their business on this for many years and it's been quite successful for them and they've been the leader, they've had the fastest acquisitions. On this one I think they claim that this can um, do 100,000 waveforms per second in this database, but it's only one screen's worth. Might be able to with resolution. I don't know. Nope, resolution doesn't do anything on this, so it's still a one screen worth. I think like a TDS 7054, 784, 7754D would be equivalent to this one, the previous generation for this kind of capability. It could do 200,000 waveforms, but this uh, this scope is a mid-range product. This isn't like one of their 7,000 series scopes, which would do better probably than the 754D. Turn the fast acquisition off. A couple of different styles of buttons. You can go to this control here, and then these are supposed to be more like regular scope controls, so like if you do math, you get a math menu that pops up. If you do display, you get a display menu that pops up or trigger. You can tell it, okay, I want to trigger on a glitch, for example. Um, but you can't do everything from this. If you wanted to do your do something in your utilities menu, it's it's not available there. So you have to go to utilities, and then you could then you could do instrument calibration or diagnostics, etc. Um, this portion of the screen is kind of odd. A lot of times there's nothing there. It seems like a waste of space, but where your cursor, where your um, traces are on this, that's the actual Linux part of this thing, running the acquisition board, doing acquisition. So this isn't like a Windows territory on this screen. And so I think that's why they don't resize it. I think it's set to be 640 by 480 and nothing else. I believe this display is 800 by 600. So what I've got going now is I've got a little... Um, 
pulse generator. This is actually a demo board for the 7000 series of tech scopes and it does a fast rise sig signal that's 200 picoseconds or faster. I have measured it before on high bandwidth equipment and it's actually around 184 picoseconds is what the rise time is on this. I haven't turned it on yet. It expects a 50 ohm termination on the scope, which the scope can do. So um, you have to set that or your rise time won't be as fast. Uh, so how would I do that with this? I would go to default setup, get channel 1 going again. I would turn my little board on. Punch activity, it's a ne negative going square wave. And then I would um, change to 50 ohm. Hit the auto set, and I'd like it to be a little larger amplitude, so change my offset like that, and then on my horizontal, that looks so. So that's two nanoseconds per division, and yeah, five giga sample sampling. We got one channel going, so we can get away with five giga samples. I can use the fast acquisition button over here to. This just shows me if there's any glitches or anything I expected. It seems to be pretty consistent. I can come back. You know, I'm not seeing really any glitches or anything there. So go back like that. You can also do a zoom thing. I haven't really played with zoom all that much on this scope. But, um, um, so I don't really know how to. Okay. So, so there I'm zooming out on the top signal. So you can play with stuff like that with this thing. If you need it, it's pretty handy. Um, so, go to measure. Measure up there. Amplitude. Um, I don't want amplitude. I want time. Rise time is what I'm looking for. Close that screen. And then over here, I'm getting a rise time of 700 picoseconds. Let's see if I get it a little faster and go like that. So that's about the limitation of this scope rise time on channel 1 is around 700 picoseconds. We could also use the other style, go to measurements. Um, this time, what is it that I'm looking for? How about if we do um, frequencies probably? Right there, frequency is this guy here, we can also do period, close the screen, so can't figure out frequency because we're so close, but if we do this, we can see that it's a um, 24 megahertz signal. I don't think this scope supports a frequency counter built into it, so it's calculated, so it's only so accurate. Um, And we could probably, if we were to zoom, I don't know if it's, let's see with zoom, I'm in just as close, or maybe I'm not, I'm not sure. Anyhow, you could use, I'm sure, the zoom tool to be able to look at the signal just as close as you were before, but still be getting your um, frequency measurements and so forth. I just haven't played with the scope enough to be quick at doing it. So... And let's see what happens if we could, probably if we do fast act acquisition, it's going to, yeah, it just goes to the regular screen. And this has been called, fast acquisition has been called different things on different scopes. It's been referred to as digital phosphor. Um, InstaView was another one. Uh, just marketing terms more than anything else. Okay, now I'll go to my default setup put it at a baseline and I'm going to show you the um, InstaView. Take a 10x um, probe and hook it to channel 1. You hear the click, the attenuator switched, it recognized recognizes that it has a new, new um, probe in it with 10x. Uh, let's see. I think I static zapped this thing a while back and so not all of the um, glitch mechanisms work so well in it anymore. But anyhow, hit auto set. So we have a square wave. The hell of it will make it a bigger square wave so that we can um, watch this thing. Looks like a pretty decent square wave, right? 
used to be on scopes you could go to display and persistence we could make it infinite persistence and what I'm looking for on infinite persistence is say you're using this and you got a glitch going here or your system's crashed and so you're watching on some sort of a signal to see if that's the cause of your system crash and so on a traditional scope you put the infinite persistence you put your signal in you could change it like that or some, something so that you could um, you know you're just looking for something irregular they're hoping you'll find it and you could spend minutes hours even days looking for something like this and then um, if you just saw one little glitch after 24 hours you know I mean is that relevant or did someone bump your setup or who knows so so anyhow back to default setup this glitch isn't working. Let's try another one. Ah, those look like glitches. So let's restart. Okay, so this time. Fault setup. Auto set. We don't see any glitches. Make it bigger. Oops, wrong control. We don't see any glitches. It looks okay. We go to display. Persistence, infinite, still looks pretty. I don't really see any displays. Now if you had like, you know, who knows, 50 or 60 lines that you needed to, to test for glitchy behavior, you can imagine how long this could take and you're probably only going to give it so many minutes before you say, hey, that looks pretty good. You know. Send it in like that. So we go to Default setup again, auto set, make it big, bring it down, then we do the fast acquisition, you're seeing glitches, I just saw a glitch on the screen, I hope the camera's catching those, but you're seeing lots of glitches and that's because this thing's capturing waveforms 100,000 times per second and, and putting them into a database and so, so that 1 in 10,000 glitch that pops up, you can see it comes on the display. If we go to infinite persistence with this, um, the display will quickly start to um, fill up with little glitches. Now, I'm pretty sure that there's a setting in this where I can make those glitches brighter so that they stand out. So like what you're seeing on the display may not be bright at all, but um, like if you're working on a power supply or something like that, um, and it, it's a little bit glitchy, it'll be just like totally obvious with this thing that it's glitchy with this facility. And the other manufacturers have something equivalent but not the same. Um, so anyhow that is the huge selling point. This was a game when Tech developed this on the say the 500Bs, TDS 500Bs and the 744As when they first came out with this. This was revolutionary. This would save an engineer countless hours if he had a true glitchy signal and you know in the end in, in the real world, if you absolutely have to have a measurement capability, you'll pay whatever you're asked to pay if you're the only provider, so Tech made a fortune off of it. Oh, one last thing I forgot. little print button over here. Let's see if it actually works. Something's happening. Usually you don't need a printer like this, but every so often when you're working on a project and you got a waveform that works well or you want to remember what something's supposed to look like, you can just print it real fast and then you have a reference of what it should be looking like or shouldn't be looking like. Um, this thing was running for, I don't know, maybe a minute when I last cut away and I stopped it to print this. Yeah. And it shows on screen up here that this is the result of 100, no, 1,695,385 acquisitions. I don't know, I forget, I knew at one time what they consider to be an acquisition, if it's a screen full or, I think it's a screen, one screen full, but it, it might be just um, you know, between the dots kind of thing, I'm not sure. But anyway, it is fast. The other manufacturers would tell you if it's not. Bye now.